Hello everyone, welcome to the 19th tutorial on a beginner's guide on how to twin motion. So, an IES file is a text file that describes the intensity of a light source. At points on a spherical grid, it provides a more photorealistic lighting effects in rendered images than other types of light distribution. These are an example of what an IES file looks like. An in-depth tutorial about IES and lighting in Revit is available in the description below as well as a card that will appear on the upper right side of the screen. But knowledge of that is not a requirement in order to learn the use of IES files here in Twinmotion, but going over that would be certainly of help. With that, let's begin. Now, starting off with an empty scene or any templates that you can download from my shared Google Drive on the description below. If your screen starts out empty like this, which is also dark, just click on the scene here below, go to Ambience, then Properties. This will show us the options that we can use to play around with it. Just increase the time of day to the one that you prefer. I actually prefer the dark one earlier, but let's look for something a lot more better. You know what? Let's go off with this. Now, we're going to be grabbing some street lights from the city library. We just hide this so we can have a much more bigger scene. Go to library. Then, go to objects. Hmm, cities? Street lights. There we go. Now, look for something that you like. I choose something very basic and simple bright for example just drag and drop it like so then we can change its orientation facing that way now as you see that street light is kind of empty like there's no type of illumination that might be because it's turned off or there's too much light around so let's go ahead and click that hide this one go back to scene and as you see the eyeball, or it's actually not visible right now, so we just have to click that. It's still not turned on. We go back to Ambience, go to Properties, and change this around to something else. There it is. As you see, even the beam angle or the cone itself is showing. Now, click on this thing again right here. And now, we're currently in the Properties section of the element itself. Now, let's scroll down and look for shadows. We can actually turn this on and off, whichever you prefer. For me, I'm going to have it disabled for now. And we should head on to miscellaneous, which is right here. You see this folder over there? If you hover your mouse on top of it, you'd see a tooltip saying it's an embedded texture. We can actually click on that and change the IES. If you have a Revit or any BIM software installed and know its IES location, head on to there. Otherwise, feel free to check out again the description below on where to find the Revit's IES locations. Now, once you're in your IES folder like mine, as you see here, let's look for a weirdly shaped BIM to see its difference. Actually, let me move on to this here so that you can see what we had originally. And a wall wash, or sorry about that, a wall wash is a much better option, which is this one. But you know what? Before that, let's go ahead and delete anything that projects light so it becomes darker. And it's better for us to see. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these cars right here and go back to the folder. Looking back on that wall wash IES, which is this one, I'm going to go ahead and open it. And as you see, it changed our currently original lighting. So, I know you can't see much of a difference, but if I were to add some sort of wall behind it so that we can see the shape of its beam, by going to the library, going back to home page, should be an objects, primitive, and let's look for something like a flat plane. This one would be good. Nope, not that one. Yep, this one should be nice. Let's just place this thing right here change its orientation like so
and change its scale just enough for us to see the projection of light all right as you see it's not even going straight because that's what a wall wash is it's supposed to project or rather the light is supposed to project from a wall and that's not what a street light should actually be and if I were to go back here to the spotlight and maybe turn on some haze hmm, give me a second here and change the orientation again it's very difficult to see let's change the time of day and hopefully it will be much help there it is as you see the haze is not projecting symmetrically to the wall instead it's going to the left just like that now just go back and click your object here and spotlight and feel free to play around with its mane even its color temperature and shadows like so be careful with playing around with the haze though because this can actually increase the stats or rather decrease your fps and use much more of your cpu and ram so i always like to turn that off and only turn it on whenever i need then going back to miscellaneous and if i were to hover here like so you would see that my ies has now changed to what i've chosen to do which is i use a part of revit's ies then also, if I were to go back to the library here and to the lights, you would see that it has, or rather Twin Motion has its own sets of IES. And if I were again to click the street light and spotlight, then there should be a replace option here. I can't find it. Hmm. Here we go, replace object. Now, let's look for something weird again. This should be good. Now just drag and drop here like so. And start replacement. As you see, it changed its it changed everything as well as the orientation. So that's about it. In a few seconds you will see some rendered image of what an illumination or a lighting looks like from standard to path tracing. And that's it for the tutorial. For questions, suggestions, please do comment below and if you find this tutorial helpful, please do support me by liking and subscribing. I will see you in the next one. Thank you very much, guys.